our High Impulse finally set to launch from Saxavord in 2023? Well, they've just taken a big step forward towards doing just that. Also in this Space News Update, I visit the UK Space Agency's Space for Everyone tour. India's Chandrayaan-3 takes a giant leap towards moon landing success and ABL Systems awakens. But first, we start with another Saxavord Spaceport update. So stick around and let's get going. Welcome everyone and we start this week's Space News Update with a progress update from Saxavord Spaceport. They recently had a visit from the BBC and to prepare everyone for the visit they shared some epic drone flyover footage of the site showing the progress that steadily continues. We can see here that building work is continuing around launch pad Fredo with the trenches to the bottom and right of the screen having been filled in with earth and concrete. To me, it still appears that these are holding tanks, likely for a deluge system, with one section likely holding the water and the other one for recovery and recycling. If we consider this image of Launchpad Elizabeth, due to be the biggest launch pad of the Plan 3 at the site, then we can see the general layout to be expected. Elizabeth has also started construction, as can be seen in this image taken by Paul Riddle and shared on social media. The LOX propellant tanks will be located off to the right hand side where the low loader is in this image with the water deluge just below. From the layout of Fredo this seems to correspond to the right hand side trench now filled over with concrete. The flame diversion will take place over the cliffs and ground facilities are to the uppermost side of the pad. This is a common plan across all three launch pads and as construction continues we'll get a better idea of exactly how the site is going to look. As we continue the flyover we can see further tanks buried in the ground as well as the first two flat concreted areas for the ground facilities buildings. There doesn't appear to be any steel foundations in place so whether these will be done later on or if they're going to use modified shipping containers or buildings that don't require foundations, we'll just have to wait for the next batch of images to know for sure. Moving along and the obvious comes into view. Just look at the progress made on the fabrication of the rocket integration facility. The main frame looks to have been completed with work now underway on the interior sections. This will be a multi-storey building used for testing of rocket components, integrating payloads into their fairings and marrying the fairing to the rocket itself. The roof spars have started to go up with plenty of steel to the left of the image for adding on. And this building is really coming along quickly and that's especially important as High Impulse RFA and Saxavord are all set to launch from the site, possibly within months, but more on that in just a moment. Saxavort is pretty much our equivalent of SpaceX's Starbase and I'm so happy to see them sharing more progress. It really helps to build public excitement for the upcoming launches and it lets us space nerds take a closer look behind the scenes. As shared on Twitter or X by Scott Manley, Saxavort is rivaling any site in the world for the title of the world's prettiest launch facility. Can you imagine the images that we're going to see with rockets taken off from Saxavort? Honestly, we're sure to rival Rocket Lab for the quality of drone shots that will be on offer as rockets take off over the North Atlantic. But with all that excitement from Saxavord and the amazing progress that they're making up at site, if that wasn't enough, High Impulse have just taken a giant step towards making launch in 2023 a real possibility. They have just announced that they have been granted a launch operator's license by the UK Civil Aviation Authority what's officially called a Large Rocket Air Navigation Order Permit, and it grants them permission to launch their 14 metre tall, 75 kilonewton suborbital SR-75 sounding rocket. Crucially, this permit gives us a few more details, including a timescale for the launch. Subject to paragraph 6 of the permit, High Impulse are granted permission for one launch of the SR-75 on any date between the 1st of December 2023 and the 30th of November 2024. So while that means the original estimated date of October 2023 is out, it does mean that we are now on for a late quarter 2023 launch 
from Saxivort as long as Launchpad Fredo is completed in time. Make no mistake, this is a massive step forward and is a huge vote of confidence by the CAA towards High Impulse. Having recently completed full duration engine testing for their Hyplox 75 motor, it's now a matter of them putting the finishing touches on the rocket and shipping it to Saxivord when they're ready for launch to take place and we can watch this thing fly. Despite it being a suborbital test, it will go a long way to qualifying not only High Impulse's technologies, which will be used going forward on their larger three-stage orbital class SL-1 rocket, but of the launch facility itself, ahead of full orbital flight taking place later on. As I mentioned in a previous video, High Impulse are going for a hybrid rocket design, where they'll use a combination of liquid oxygen and solid paraffin derived propellants. 12 Hyplox 75 motors will be used in total in the SL-1, with 8 on the first stage and 4 on the second stage. So the sounding rockets testing will ensure that when time comes to scale up operations, they'll know for sure if the Hyplox 75s will be able to withstand the rigours of flight. Skyrora will no doubt be taking note as their Skylark L sounding rocket is doing the exact same thing. Basically, it's a test platform for their larger orbital class rocket. And this seems to be the way across the board, with many companies in Europe taking this exact same route. Not only all of this, but the CAA themselves are actively trying to streamline their processes to make it easier to grant launch and spaceport operators licenses. Problems uh, became evident when they were going through these exact processes when it came time to Virgin Orbit's launch from Spaceport Cornwall. Remember, uh, the original launch was slated to take place in November 2022, but delays in licensing eventually pushed that back to January of 2023. Uh, it's unfortunately taken a parliamentary committee to push through the CAA to implement these changes. After all, delays in licensing can have knock-on effects for these companies and other organizations. So it's good to see them taking steps to address this problem and hopefully that means that licensing won't be an issue. Quite frankly, it hasn't taken High Impulse very long to get their license in comparison to Virgin Orbit. We also have to remember though that the CAA space licensing team are one of the smallest departments in the UK civil service. So they're growing and learning as much as anyone in these pioneering days for UK spaceflight. Saxivord are hoping to get their spaceport license any week now. Uh, so watch this space, pardon this pun, and remember this time, because a year from now, I'm fully expecting to be talking about and reminiscing about the first launches from Saxivord. Now, if you are enjoying this video or any of my other space news updates, then remember to give it a little like down below. It really helps me fight off that pesky algorithm and reach as many people as possible. And that's what we're all about here on this channel, spreading the word about the UK space industry, because we really are living in exciting times. I also want to give a massive shout out to my very first Patreon members, Mike and Chris. Your support means the world and I thank you both so very much. If you want to consider joining the team in return for exclusive benefits not available anywhere else, then do consider checking the link in the description below. But now, back to the news. Now, this past week I had the opportunity to visit the UK Space Agency's Space for Everyone tour when they visited Aberdeen. It was a great opportunity to take the kids along and indulge in some space nerdery as well as see that 70 foot replica Launcher 1 rocket. This of course is a replica owned by Spaceport Cornwall and what's great about it is the diorama on the side showing the internal workings of the rocket to one-to-one -to -one scale. It made for a great visual to explain how the rocket works and honestly I saw so many kids fawn over it with a sense of wonderment in their eyes and that's not just me saying it for the purposes of this video. So again it's all about the kids and some of these kids may have never seen a rocket up close and in person. What an exciting thing to be able to finally do it in their own backyard. Also, there was a whole careers section on hand with information boards and representatives from the UK Space Agency itself. They were really keen to talk to anyone with an interest in looking towards starting a career in the space industry, and there was also an interactive VR experience to get the imagination going. 
Most exciting for me was the amazing team from Orbex who were on hand to chat to people about their operations, with videos, handouts and real passion in their delivery. Fortunately, I was able to take just a wee bit of their time to chat with them and I can tell you that good things are around the corner, with testing and construction of the Orbex Prime well underway. While I was maybe too busy talking to remember to snap a little selfie, what I can say is that Orbex are really passionate about what they do, and you could tell that right away by the way that Penny and Frankie engaged with everyone who spoke with them. So thank you guys again so very much for taking just a bit of time out of your day to chat to me. The Space for Everyone tour continues in Newcastle from the 10th to the 14th of August, and then makes stops in Hull, Great Yarmouth, and finishes up in Hastings in September. So if you can get along, I'd highly recommend it. I know that Ambassat will be in Newcastle, so if you get the chance, go along and speak with them. They're really passionate about what they do, and Ambassat are a company I'm keeping my eye on. I'll have more about them in a future video, so stay tuned to this channel. Moving across the world now, and there's some good news from India's Chandrayaan 3. They've taken another small step towards completion of their mission with a successful lunar orbit insertion and sending back these images of the moon's surface as it passed by. Over the next two weeks, Chandrayaan-3 will be gradually lowering its orbit, with the first descent burn having taken place on August the 6th. They are aiming for a 100km circular orbit, which is when the lander and rover will then descend to the lunar surface. This is due to take place around the 23rd or 24th of August, so our eyes will definitely be tuned to further updates from them over the next few weeks as they slowly descend towards the lunar surface. Finally, ABL Systems, the rocket manufacturer that will ca carry Lockheed Martin's UK Pathfinder satellites, have awoken from their long slumber. And they've done so in fiery fashion. On the 4th of August, they announced that the second stage of the RS-1 has undergone successful acceptance testing at their base in Mojave, California. It was back in January of this year when the maiden flight of the RS-1 failed just 10 seconds after liftoff. Stage 1 suffered a complete loss of power, causing it to crash some 60 feet from the launch pad. An initial investigation after the first test back in January found that a fire spread from the engine bay to the avionics bay. Uh, and while the root cause is unknown, suffice it to say that when a rocket takes off, you definitely want the flamey stuff going down and not back up into your rocket itself. In any case, all of the engines have completed acceptance testing and ABL appear ready to move forward with flight number two. The UK Pathfinder is planned to be a constellation of CubeSats developed by Lockheed Martin in what was originally slated to be the first launch and first satellite deployment from UK soil up at Saxevoord back in around 2022. Due to problems with the RS-1, however, and of course with Saxevoord not being ready, we can be pretty sure that that title is going to be claimed likely by High Impulse. Still, but given that Lockheed Martin are partners of Saxevoord, ABL still need to get things going and need to get the RS-1 operational for deployment of these satellites. So, there you have it. And while the bulk of my recent news has been more of an international variety, it's really exciting to see things finally making progress at home. But if that wasn't enough for you, this past week we've also gotten word that the Euclid Space Telescope from the European Space Agency is operational and has captured some of the first images from the universe during its commissioning phase. So while you hit that like, share and subscribe button on your way out, I'll leave you with these amazing photographs to enjoy. I've been Tom June, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.